Hello everybody and welcome to Reflector Reflections. Um, I don't know how it's gonna turn, like how it's gonna come out, but there is something that I, I feel like, yeah, I need to share something about this. This is weird, you know? Um, so I'm just gonna give it a try and, and we'll see where it takes us. Um, you know, I've been a student with um, Brian Rose over the past uh, three, four months in one of his accelerator courses. And what stood out for me in terms of, you know, being a student of his was that there was a, a, a fantastic, from my perspective at least, authenticity in the guy. Like, however he shows himself in the videos on his website or how he comes over in his vlogs and how he stands there and gives one-on-one -on -one feedback on the people who are part of his course with, you know, we were quite a bunch of us. Um, he's genuine, he's straightforward, he walks his talk and, you know, no issue with that. So it's a guy that in some way or another, and, you know, his work is, is interesting to me, you know. So yesterday I, I saw that he brought out a, a very highly viewed, I think one of the most highly viewed videos um, of David Icke talking about um, the coronavirus. Now, as he says, you know, he says, I'm not necessarily, you know, agreeing or totally convinced of what this guy is saying, but there is an, uh, definitely something there worth listening to. And I'm not alone because there's millions of viewers who are also listening to, like, to see what the perspective of this guy is. Now, for those who haven't seen it, um, he's a conspiracy theorist and uh, talks about his views. I listened to the whole episode because I was really interested now. And um, yeah, the guy just talks about things that he sees or has a suspicion about. And, um, and then basically what I found most interesting is that his general message is coming through at the end of um, the, the interview, where basically David Icke says, well, you know, I stand for individuality and I think that individuality and uniqueness is the way to stand up to the acquiescence to the illusion of power. So he's basically saying that the world today is a manifestation of our acquiescence, our staying quiet and not saying anything, to the illusion of power around us. Okay? So he's basically saying, you know, that he stands for individual acknowledgement of your of your power of your life force and 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 of your rights and all that kind of stuff so the message the essential message of this two hour interview with brian rose was actually i mean for me it's like yeah i mean man me too i stand for that you know so then i i saw yesterday an interview with a vlog of Brian Rose on, on the internet and he was saying like I put this uh, YouTube I put this video on YouTube like I usually do in my business and uh, it was banned it was banned from YouTube because in some way or another there is a correlation being made about um, the you know, pandemic that we are living now and certain technologies that are put in place. And there is even a, you know, certain uh, basically insinuations that the nature of the virus that we are living isn't necessarily exactly what it is. And in that interview, I looked at it, I mean, they're quoting certain people. They're quoting a, a guy like, you know, recognized medical doctors, you know, he's uh, quoting Dr. Andrew Kaufman. So there's all kinds of data that are put forward that are like, well, you know, maybe well, let's listen to what this person has to say, you know. So uh, Brian Rose was saying like, well, you know, I brought this out and basically what I'm seeing is that I'm being prevented uh, from one of the most influential, you know, broadcasting 
online broadcasting services of basically my freedom of speech. I was like, wow, that's really interesting. And so I, I you know, I've all, I'm always looking a little bit at um, global, at the cycles. You know, what are we facing? What are we going through? So I had a little bit of a look uh, through the, the wheel of human design. You know, what are, what, what are we living? Okay. And um, for those who are not necessarily so familiar with this, um, there is something in human design, it's called neutrino weather. So basically, the science of differentiation, which is what human design is, this, this is based on the fact that neutrinos, which are very small particles that come out of the nuclear reactions in stars, that those very, 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 very tiny, tiny nano, nano, nano particles that we thought were massless actually have mass, which has been proved in the end of the 90s, and that this mass basically is able to, like, to store information and have it fly through us. So we're being programmed by the universe because basically we are living in a neutrino ocean. So that's, if you ever wondered why, well, what is one of the scientific backgrounds of human design knowledge, that it's about neutrinos, obviously, you know, so... Um, and we can look at what that information being bombarded on us on, a, on every moment looks like. Hmm? So I wanted to have a little bit of view on the weather because I'm always paying attention to the nodes of the moon. Where are the nodes of the moon? Because that's basically where everybody's focus is being brought on, you know, the, the, the nodes of the moon. In our personal design, the nodes of the moon, the personality nodes is the focus that we are designed to have on life. We each have our own perspective on life. But then there is the nodes of the moon of the programming field that basically, you know, turns our attention not to how we are supposed to have a perspective, but here's the perspective of the homogenization, okay, homogenized perspective. And now we are living, actually just today it's changing, which is always interesting. We were, yesterday when all of this happened, we were living in the fifth line of the nodes. So we have the 10, 15 nodal opposition. And the 10, 15 nodal opposition in the upper trigram lines, the fifth and the sixth line, they're actually part of the cross of prevention. So the cross of prevention in some way or another has got something to do with, you know, uh, caring for the unique frequency of our individual being, okay? So there, there, that's really what the cross of prevention actually kind of points towards. So we have these nodes in the fifth line on the cross of prevention. And here we're seeing something that talks about being prevented to say something, which is basically a human right. And it ain't necessarily have something to do with preventing people like with basically caring about, you know, your well-being. So, uh, you know, as a reflector, when I see these kind of things, I immediately, something in me goes like, Meh, that's off, okay? So, we're under these fifth line heretic nodes of prevention, 10, 15, and all of a sudden, certain things are being prevented to be said. There were actually, you know, as Brian Rose was saying, like, why don't they just do the, you know, why don't we have independent um, investigations going on or this or that? We can verify these things. There's names, there is, you know, things that are being proclaimed, there's this, that, like, so why not verify it? So why close and prevent certain things from being said, apparently, for the well-being of us individuals. I mean, I don't get that. I mean, if there is, if in some way or another, one of the things was like, well, yeah, you know, some of those technical, technological installations have been attacked and all that kind of stuff, but there's not really a link between showing something audiovisually 
and then having certain you know reactions of that in our society i mean for that matter they should definitely you know stop showing any violent movies or movies where there's any arms implied because that's one of the biggest businesses causing the biggest amounts of deaths and we're not like we're constantly being fed audiovisually that kind of information so it doesn't hold stand so okay you know it's like interesting to see and especially interesting to see i find because there is so much Basically, you know, in the programming field right now, there is information being bombarded through Pluto in the 61st gate over here, Saturn in the 60, uh, sorry, Jupiter in the 61st gate over here, Saturn in the 60th gate over there, and, you know, also we have Mars in the 41st gate. Now, what do all of these gates have in common? You know? In my work, I'm a big fan and I love um, the information that is related to what Ra used to call the faces of the Godhead. So the faces of the Godhead, just to make it very simple, you know, they, they allow us to see at frequencies from a little bit of a bigger perspective. And all of these frequencies have something to do with what we call in human design the keepers of the wheel. And the keepers of the wheel are basically the big, huge structures that hold everything in place. You know? The wheel that makes life turn. So these big, huge structures that are holding everything in place, there is Pluto right now looking at the inner truth of all of it. Okay? And at the same time, there is you know, the law of jupiter being like okay is this really you know according to life's laws what all this all this you know underlying structures that are going on there and then you have um saturn which is the discipline saturn will be able to like point out basically what the restrictions of all these things are the 60th gate and then you got this, you know, impetuous, immature energy of Mars in the 40, 41st gate that is basically saying like, yeah, okay, but let's cut all of this back and have a serious look at all of this. So, and at the same time, okay, we're also seeing, especially yesterday, I mean, there was so much heretical energy flying around because 61st gate, fifth line, twice. Um, the 60th gate of uh, Saturn, fifth line, heretical line. The Sun and Earth were in the fifth line. So we had the Sun, the Earth, sorry, the Earth, I didn't color it in. The, the Sun was in the 51st gate of shock. You know? So basically the 51st gate is basically saying like, here, you know, can you adapt to that? You know, this is a piece of information, can you adapt to it? And it's standing in the 57, the, the, the Earth was in the 57th gate, fifth line. Venus was in the 20th gate, fifth line. So we have this definition going on right now about awareness being you know, brought out that in some way or another can change something and make aware about, change something about the behavior of human beings and at the same time, you know, enlighten something about the behavior, wake something up in terms of human behavior. And we are seeing under this particular, under this particular nodal configuration, that all of a sudden there's certain institutions that are there that we are relying upon. I mean, I'm also relying upon them in order to post my videos and all that kind of stuff. And they're putting in place something that they claim to be a prevention for our individual and collective well-being. You know, so there is really something that, it, that, that you know, is like, really? <laughs> okay, so if we continue looking at the programming field, we're also seeing that Mercury, okay, Mercury is in the theme that has to do with expressing something that is underlaying the crisis. Uh, Mercury in the 64th gate, in the, four, in the, 60, uh, in the, sorry, in the 36th gate, in the fourth line. 
So it's, it's basically you know, putting something out in terms of the underlying themes of this crisis that basically through, through Neptune is changing our individual social behavior that we at this time we need to adapt to. So, and then, you know, obviously there is also Uranus here that is changing the way that we are caring. So, okay, you know, I, I'm not, I'm basically not putting anything forward of, I'm just trying to point certain things out. It's like, I'm, it's basically I'm sharing the way that I look at these things without necessarily, you know, not having made my full picture of it, even though you know, when it comes to freedom of speech <laughs> and freedom of speech being prevented. And that, that's something that I'm like, wow, I stand on the same ground as Brian Rose when it comes to that. Like, no way. Like, there, this shouldn't be prevented, supposedly, for the well-being of our collectivity and our individuality. So I also had a view on, okay, who is this David Icke? You know, I pulled up his design over there and I'll show it on the screen. And basically we're, we're, we're looking at a guy who is a 2-4, okay? He's cross of the four ways. He's got his son in the 24th gate in the second line. So he's being called out to basically you know, what is he being called out for? He's basically here to mutate something in our spirit. I mean, he's got the channel 360 and he's got the channel 3955. He's got a totally open G center. So when it comes to looking at the system or, you know, the basically all the underlying structures of humanity, well, you know, he's pretty equipped for it. So, I don't, and then he's looking in his open, he's got an open uh, heart center with the uh, 21st gate twice, you know, so he's being basically in, in, in terms of how, where, where are the power structures, where's the control of the power structures. So obviously, I mean, man, it's a, basically it's just a weirdo who's sharing or making his contribution to the spirit of what it is to be alive. And then I had another perspective and I was like, okay, through Jovian Archive, I got this, um, the, the chart of COVID-19, when it basically, according to them, started popping up somewhere in November. And in November, you see also that the nodes are actually standing in something that says delusion as a substitute for genuine tranquility. So, interesting, you know, it's like, okay, well... Pff, at least there is material enough to, to basically listen to different points of view, okay? And if you bring all of that into global cycles, what, what, what also kind of, you know, is like, when we are looking at global cycles, which is really interesting these days, to, you know, is that we're also, basically right now, the global cycles is the cross of planning and the cross of Maya. And these two crosses, they occupy eight godheads. And we're moving to the sleeping phoenix and we're moving to the cross of penetration. And these two crosses uh, occupy the other eight godheads. So there's only 16 godheads and we're leaving eight behind, which are programming fields of more than 1,600 years. And we're moving into a programming field that is like a gigantic shift, okay? A gigantic shift in consciousness. And one of the things that human design points out in this gigantic shift of consciousness goes in the same direction of what this man is actually pointing out. That we're here to learn to stand in the intelligence of our life force. And we're not here to stand in some kind of survival-driven intelligence. And another aspect that I found actually was interesting. You know, I've, I'm, I'm uh, you know, how to say this? Like, my soul and my heart has always been inspired by Osho. And Osho made so much brought so much awareness, basically, on all the corruption and all the manipulation going on in politics. 
and showing how we as a human as human beings are all giving up our personal power because of an acquiescence of the illusion of power in politics, institution, technocrats, whatever you want to call it these days. I mean, you know, we're basically giving up something of ourselves to something else. And, and it's inter from my perspective, it's interesting to see, like, you know, we're, we're basically, we are moving from the, 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 the Godhead that has to do with Mitra, which is an expansion of consciousness, and we are moving into the Godhead of Kali, which has everything to do with rebirth, possibly rebirth. And, and also about the Kali is very much the destroyer of false devotions. So we are all devoted to our minds, to our fears, to all that kind of stuff. And basically, this evolutionary shift is asking us to, you know, look at this devotion that we have to false authorities. Okay, so, and, and then you have this Plutonian, very, very powerful, mixed with Jupiter, this Plutonian breaking down and looking at, you know, let's, let, what are all these structures that supposedly, you know, are behind the curtain holding all of this stance. So, from my perspective and looking at the, you know, the global activations and where the program is moving us, I don't think, my personal opinion is like, I don't think it's, it's, it's a contribution to the well-being of our collective behavior or our individual well-being or whatever you might understand under prevention to start cutting on our freedom of speech. So now we're moving. It's always going to be, it's always interesting. The nodes now are moving fourth line, third line, second line, first line, you know. So now we're going to start feeling individually in our own lives what this thing has to, like how that you know, basically starts playing into our own personal and collective behavior. And if our personal and collective behavior is in service of love, of individuality, because that's what these notes point, point towards, okay, of our equality, no problem. But the moment that there starts to be something that says the, the contrary, pay attention. So, you know, it's just a kind of a reflection that I wanted to share because, you know, something on my radar went like, uh-uh. So, that was it. Thanks for listening and till next time. Bye-bye.